The Bible says, I was glad when they came unto me and said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Welcome, beloved, to Mount Welcome Missionary Baptist Church. We are a faith-based ministry committed to creating and maintaining an environment conducive to spiritual growth and Christian witness by equipping believers so that we might carry out the mission of Jesus Christ. The Bible also declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We also pray that you receive an empowering Word that will meet you where you are, deepen your Christian walk, and draw you closer to the God who was our Savior and Liberator. God bless you. Die with dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity. 
it's not a disaster to be able to capture your ideas, but it is a disaster to have no idea to capture. It's not a disgrace not to reach the stars, but it is a disgrace to have no stars to reach them. Not failure, but no aim to be failed. Not failure, but no aim to be failed. So I have come to you with this message today. It's targeted towards young people, but we all are young and fit, so we will benefit our hope from this world. So the title today is called Higher Learning. Not failure, but no end. Higher learning. Not failure, but no end. So as we've read about the biology of the other, there's a special word I've got. I've got a little bit of a work with the other. I mean, all the higher education, uh, quite deep, so I have some knowledge about how it works. So today I'm going to give you, starting off with a class course in higher learning, a higher education. I turn to your neighbor. It's a neighbor, low neighbor, we're going to school. All right. High Learning 101. Now, colleges and universities, also known as higher education and higher learning, is called that because the education is beyond high school. It's higher than high school. It's post-secondary. So you have primary, middle school, secondary, which is high school, and post-secondary, or higher education. Um, to the colleges and universities. The difference between a college and a university is that a college tends to only offer an undergraduate degree, a bachelor's degree. Universities offer advanced degree, master's degree, and the board of degrees, and the so forth. So, in colleges and universities, some folks can understand the difference. That is primarily the difference. The type of degree that they offer, that they confront. Now, uh, people with college degrees, there's many benefits. That's the young people here. I can even listen up. Uh, Uh, you know, I don't see what gets in the techno talk, right? That's the phone, that's the text, and that's the tweet, and all of that, right? And so when they don't have their phones, that's cut off. How many of y'all from New Jack City? Old school New Jack City. Remember Chris Roberts, Craighead? He's like, just be calling me. Yeah. So, sometimes you got to stay off the techno crack pipe, but you're looking good. Your face is a little, little puzzle, but uh, uh, are you on the pipe? Oh, 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 call the pipe. Oh, call him. I'm not just keep calling. I'm not for real. That's why I wanted to sit up here and see that. All right, here we go with that. Hey, Alex, let's do this because I'm really going to be talking to you. I need about 80 of y'all to come sit right here in this front row. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Then I need another another three to sit over there. I'm speaking to you, young people. This is for y'all today. I need to be able to look at you. Else I'm going to be like this the whole time. All right, I need that call and response. Just like you have the party and the song, come on, you show up, you react, react. All right. So here we go. Higher Education 101. Okay? All right, you can make it. And I'm sure the mothers of y'all, one or two of y'all, squeeze the name. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, don't leave that. You can relocate within the sanctuary. All right. All right. That's not a get out of church free card. All right. Okay. I learned in 101. So, people with college degrees, I need you to listen and hear me closely. Uh, many benefits. People with college degrees, four year bachelor's degrees, they make more money, they have better mental and physical health, they live longer, they're more likely to marry and be involved in their children's education, um, they have lower unemployment, less likely to go to jail, to name a few. Right? Now, that's not to say that people without college degrees don't have good lives. But college degrees do these uh, correlated these sorts of things. Right? So, there are many benefits. Now, college develops critical thinking skills, familiarity with various subjects, and some mastery in a particular subject. How many of you all want to go to college? Right? Okay. So, when you go to college, you major in something. Right? Chemistry, biology, history, whatever it might be, you have a major. But really, what's going on also is the liberal arts. So you're exposed to all sorts of courses while you're in college, not just the major. So the liberal arts is about freedom. It's the liberating part from the African Egyptian mystery system where you went to school for 40 years to become a master. It's about finding your passion, your purpose, your call. That's what true education should be about, not just teaching. So the first institution of higher learning, as I mentioned, was the Egyptian mystery system about 2000 BC, a little bit before that. These are African people. That's before the race mixed. 
came in and with the John C. Black people were the first educated. The first college university was run by black people. You all need to understand this. Young people and adults alike. Some of y'all get off the old talk about that. Right about that. That's where you all are from, whether you know it or not. That's where all of humanity is from, whether you know it or not. So don't be afraid of it. We know there may be some challenges there. Okay, but don't be afraid of it. Humanity began there. Humanity can try to get these archaeological cultures and speak it. Okay, so let's embrace some balance in our education. And not just the emotion. Amen? All right, all right. Now, I may step on a few stones out here. I may challenge some of your beliefs, but we can still do this together. I need to keep some smiles. I see you. Stay up in blank face, first lady, thank you. All right? Okay, so here we go. Look at U.S. College in, in, in the United States. Who knows that? First college in the U.S. Harvard University, you can step up. All right. Harvard University founded 1636. Harvard University, now, the thing about Harvard was the first graduate college, but uh, after the market, we're in a lot. You have to understand that it was founded for white men with privileged prestige and the title of black people first to a college kid with the title of black people. But we, we weren't invited there, so we were established later on in the mid 1800s. It's HBCU. What is HBCU stand for? Historically black colleges and universities. All right, so roughly about 105 of them right now, so that black folks could go to school. Now, the HBCU, actually, people say, well, do we need HBCU anymore? The graduation rate, so you take into account socioeconomic status and three college characteristics. So if you have students with the same GPA, same level of household income, from the same neighborhood, and so forth, they're more likely to graduate from an HBCU than from a private white institution. So y'all may say, well, that's what HBCU is achieved here. Okay, so why is it that HBCU disproportionately graduates students who enroll in graduate professional school? Right? If the, if the curriculum was easy for them, how they get into law, law school, PhD, and so forth, in disproportionately higher numbers. Right? So there is no debate about the value added of HBCUs. The data shows students, African Americans, who are going to be more likely to graduate, especially in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, who are going to be studying by HBCUs. You also have to keep that going by HBCUs. That is your commission. All right, so. In terms of the American population, 32% of Americans have a bachelor's degree, 21% of African Americans have a bachelor's degree. Now, in America, that's roughly a third. So we're a highly literate society, but in terms of college degrees, it's about one third. College offers undergraduate degrees only as a first of four universities with grad degrees. So academically, I want to bring up this for you guys as you think about going to college. Academically, typically you take five courses per semester. Five courses per semester, each course is worth three credit hours. You take about 15 hours per semester, right? You take that over four years, or two other courses, of course. Take that over four years, right? That's 140 hours. Most colleges and universities require about 140 hours to graduate, right? You take your major, you take your minor courses, you take your own studies courses. Now, in terms of your professors, full time professors, four different categories. There's an assistant professor who just started it. Right, full time teaching during the whole career. They go up for promotion and tenure. Tenure is a job for life. Right? So they will pay tenure to associate professor. They will go on another promotion at full professor. And the highest level is a distinguished professor or a job of tenure. And there's a four basic categories of the six types of professors. I'm going to bring you home a little later. I'll give you the six of the Now, when we turn to our class, now this is a letter from Paul to the church in Rome. Paul, the gold. Friday, theologian Paul, Paul who was blinded on the master's road for a few days and then was given sight back by Ananias and the scales fell off his eyes. Paul who wrote over half of the New Testament. Paul who spoke to the Gentiles, probably more than he spoke to the Jews. We know who Paul is, a great man of God. He wrote this letter to the church in Rome. In chapter 12, 1 through 5, Paul is describing being a living sacrifice for God. Okay, we need to read that whole chapter quite the same. But I wanted to focus and drill down on verse number two. Do not conform, the first part of it, to the pattern of this world. What does it mean to conform? To conform, etymologically speaking, the root word, the origin of it, is to go along with the group, the fit in. Usually to avoid being left out, even when you don't personally agree with what the group is saying. You go along to get along, peer pressure, whatever it might be. 
comes from the Latin conformare, which means the fashion and the same form. So this applies to the kind of thing. Socially, kind of exposes you to many things. Some of these things are good, some not good. Here are some of the good things, potentially good things. You can use develop great friendships. I have friendships to this day that I made in The weddings I've been in, out of classmates. People in my way, the rules made, out of classmates, you stay in touch, you develop great friendships over time. Join it at the thirty years of the world, I joined it for 20 to 30. Most of the time, they use their house to do it, because they can it, but they can take a little tweaking, all right? Um, leadership opportunity, study abroad. They're willing to study another country for a year, so that's a four a few weeks. Uh, we need other focused and driven individuals. Other individuals who may be spiritual and religious like you, they're always very good to go for them in the college. And you may ask at least your future staff. Yeah. Uh, so you might need them, I didn't think you marry them in, but the college, the, the field in college, you want to take names and take notes. Because once you get out to the real world, you'll find that quality varies greatly. But in college, that's a nice pool uh, to keep your eye on. You go back to home, you keep your eye on people. Oh, okay, you're a law student, okay, I can do this. Uh, you know, you keep track, right? And then when you're ready, it uh, can come in here. There's some potentially bad things that happen in college. Drug abuse. There is no need to be in college. Yes, top three are regular things. Some kids from the class, they go like that. Not just anymore. I thought I looked like this. I've seen students, and I've been around. Had a party. Been around people who've been out on my bed. You see the little. I see the. I see the little flutter in the eye. I mean, you can sort of tell, right? Some students from the class, smoke the green glasses, right? Clean. You can do that. Alcohol is it? All kinds of kids. It's one of these kind of parties. Thank you. 
to the other people. It's big business. So these are some of the bad things that, that, that may go on. Not only that, why do you live in the same, but all people in your boyfriend and girlfriend? I don't do that either, right? Oh, I've heard my girlfriend, I don't do that either. Okay. All right. Other people in college, other young people in college, she was normal. But rampant. Right? That's, that's what it's expected. Like. Well, I was in college, I actually did not have a girlfriend the whole time. Why not? I think that's okay. I'm like, look, everybody around here keeps looking at why would you not go through this drama and headache and stress of being in a committed relationship with some boy out there? Look, young lady, I like you, let's date, whatever, but y'all not ready for a relationship. If you can't feel this to an extent where you think you need that, then we can remain friends and move on. It works, right? So when you, when you, oh, hey, I mean, so when you talk to young ladies that I dated at college, there's no bad, there's no need to dog story because I was on it, right? And you'd be surprised how people will accept when you go to the Okay. All right. So, I'm not saying I was a friend of everybody else, so I know. All right. So, now, for the notion that these bad things can happen, but be you transformed, let's take about that uh, 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 second verse, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, renewing, making new of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, how do you renew your mind to find God's will for your life? Well, in addition to enrolling in physical college, you need to enroll in what I'm calling Kingdom University. Kingdom University, what does that look like? Kingdom University has no foundation. It has always existed. The president has not been elected by the board of trustees. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the creator of every good and perfect gift, the master teacher, the inspired instructor, the president, Lord of Lords, we call God. He runs Kingdom University. So as we enroll in our physical college campuses, simultaneously we can enroll in Kingdom University. And everyone, everyone can enroll here. All right, so here we go. Now, uh, the, 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 the piece that you need to get in terms of Kingdom University piece is that uh, we can go old school and talk about how schools used to be and how it can be going forward. So when you look to your president for inspiration, my president, John Wilson, President Warren, right? So we can look back at all these other things. But in Kingdom University, when you see, if you see, if you feel, when you experience the love of God, it's a worship experience, right? And you find yourself shouting in class. What does that look like? I want you to Kingdom University. Remember, you need 15 credit hours for a full load of time. So let's review what that might look like. Five uh, courses, we pray to teach. You should always be involved in these five classes. Course number one, prayer 101. Prayer 101, where the instructor is Dr. David, the soulful songwriting shepherd boy from Bethlehem, a tenured and full professor in the Department of Psalms, where he offers hundreds of verses of prayer, praise, and worship to God. Then you leave that, that, that course, Prayer 101, to go down the hall to an introduction to perseverance. What does that look like? Talk about a what tail, but then big ball of shot call of Professor Joseph, a tenured and full professor in the Department of Vision, Dreams, and Correction. Y'all get that a little later. Then you go down the hall, you go to introduction to patience. Now, what about Professor Job? Job, tenured and full professor in the Department of Long Suffering, Recompense, and Increase. Then you take the four course, and this is a separate course, it's a team talk. What do I mean? The talk by three distinguished professors, a separate course called Through the Fire. Who's that taught by? The team taught by three senior four professors named Chad Rack, Lee Jack, and a bad Negro. Now, these professors teaching this course, team talk, they represent the department of you can't touch me. Now, our last course, what right, we we'll call our capstone course, if you will. Last but not least, the course, course called Love and Forgiveness. Taught by the distinguished professor and endowed chair of the Department of Salvation and Eternal Life. The master teacher, inspired instructor, the one and only professor, Peach of Prince, a.k.a. Dr. Divine, a.k.a. the good Reverend Dr. Jesus the Christ. That is your course load at Kingdom University. So let's back up. Well, what's the social life? You told me about that. Yeah, what's the social life like at Kingdom University? Now, instead of being a weed head, you can be a weed head. R E A D. Right. Reading the Bible with regularity, taking hits all day long. Who hits? Hits. Taking hits in the Bible all day long. It's taking high on Jesus, high in the Spirit. Right? Or in smoking trees, you read the Word. Right? Now, both high, but from a different source. And yours is more constructive for your salvation. Now, we talk about when some of the different men, the different men, M.C. Right? Right? When they pass that brick around, and you look at that, because it's sitting in your head, I don't know what it is, but I've heard that it's sitting in your head quite a bit, right? So then you hear 
21, 21. So read that. Well, that's Matthew and the disciples to me in D 21, 21, chapter 21, verse 21. Read that up. And Jesus replied, truly I say, if you have faith and do not die, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. You are a mountain mover. You're not moving like mad dog. If somebody's offering you something like, whatever, I'm bigger than that. Oh, let's talk about the fact. That's your question, right? Now, the challenge, and here's, the, and here's where you've got to be a little deeper. So I'll teach you a course called African American Male Identity and Spirit. So the group of young men, so they're talking about, you know, uh, the relationships and sex rally and baby center. And so one student is like, well, you know, I've never had sex. He was Jewish. He was like, come on, you know. So I've never had sex. And the reaction from the other brothers was, you know, we're in Atlanta. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Listen to me. These brothers are all students in perfect to be clear. But the response is, what's wrong with you? That is the wrong Absolute wrong question. The real question is, what's right with you? How in this best pool of fluid slapping around and we can get them sticking each other with stuff? You are not thinking to do that. How do you stick to your principles? How do you do it? That person is a specific example. He's a thermostat. I'm going to give you an example before. What's the difference between a thermometer and a thermostat? Well, I'll break it down for you. This is a little extra. This is a little part of this quick, right? Thermometer. 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 Meter. Measure. Thermometer is a measure of heat. It tells you the temperature in the room. You want to know how it is? You look at the thermometer. It's so 72 degrees, right? A thermostat, thermostat, state, determines the state of the temperature in the room. If you want to change the temperature in the room, you go to the thermostat and you adjust it in the room of death. My question for you, young people, is what type of person are you? Are you the thermostat person or are you the thermometer person? The thermometer person walks through an environment and they person doing drugs and all this. I do you drugs and all this, and I was just, I'm an acceptor. I'm a follower. But the thermostat man is the leader. He walks into the environment stage. He walks in and they say, well, I, I, I know. And this happened to me. I, I was in Los Angeles with some friends. And, you know, they, some of them don't use the best language for a third of the women that be the nation. So I walked in the room and everything. I'm like, oh, we can't, you know, talk about black women. I call black women queer. It's funny. But uh, they said, we can't talk about black women like that. Why is it? And the other guys said, well, I said, we can talk all we want. But the notion was my mere presence affected the environment because I don't speak like that. Okay? So what type of influence are you having? Now, that, that was a little extra. Now I'm back to the script. All right, so talk about the N-word. Do you use it? All right, so what you do is you tell them in terms of the text, tell them that. Say, okay, how do you think I've got that? Say, are you a Christian? Or a Do you believe what the Bible says? Or a Christian? Do you think the Bible says that? Do you think the Bible says that? I'll be quiet. But they know what they're saying. They can't post the verse that they know what you're You're not supposed to do. So why are you forcing me to violate my belief that you also are? They'll be quiet. They may say, oh, we should. Because many of them will feel convinced. Because they're calling on something they said they believe in. You're not trying to persuade them. Okay? So, language, the N word. Uh, now, some just said use the N word as a general word to call the people. It's a term of English. Okay. Would you call Jesus a mission? Would you call Jesus, if he showed up, would you call him a mission? So, why would you call his children the N word? Why would you call his descendants, his believers, his followers, the end word? And understanding the history and power and effectiveness of that word. Would you call the Virgin Mary a hoe? Hey, ho, I don't know if Jesus a hoe. Really? Really? So why would you call other women? And all the evidence suggests most of it that these people were of color. So Mary was of color. So the blood and blue eyes, no, she was of color. So there is some women of color thing there. Think about how you refer to other black women, other black girls, and the world you do. Right? Now, in Kingdom University, right, there's a, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a temperance of the place. We say salt water, fresh water, and that flow from the same spring. You can't go out and just pray God in one moment and curse man in the next. That's highly hypocritical, inconsistent, and not true to who you are as a Christian person. Now, I understand that this is a process, but I still have to teach you anyway. So, in terms of the feeling piece, understand that school is your job. But you're a guy. Right? That's so 
that you are cool with your job. You know that it's a sin to be sorry that you Not only is cool, but you know that everybody now at your job. What does the good book say? Whatever you do. Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. And working for the Lord, not human masters. What is on your job, strong people? Jesus was your supervisor. And you had a report to him. And he was watching you and evaluating you. And you're all telling me, I don't think you have to do that. And Jesus is are you doing everything you really can for Jesus, your supervisor? Let's think about that a bit more deeply. Second Timothy 2.15 says, study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be saved, but be the body of the word of truth. And you can study and understand the word of truth. But let me visit the words of Benjamin Elijah May. He's also known as Buck Dibble. Uh, Alex President, scholar, theologian, uh, civil rights activist, icon of thousands of Morehouse men. He's the president of Morehouse in 1940 and 1967. Brought us to our, 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 what did he say? It must be borne in mind that the tragedy in life doesn't lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in having no goal to reach. It isn't a calamity that God has been unfulfilled, but it is a calamity not to dream. It's not a disaster to be unable to capture your idea, but it is a disaster to have no idea to catch. It is not a disgrace not to reach the stars, but it is a disgrace to have those stars to reach for. Now, failure. Most great people have faith. How many of you all receive 100% of every examination? Right? So all of you all failed to answer at least one question. We all failed in some form. Right? It's a matter of the group. Now, when you think about LeBron James, I don't know LeBron James going back to the team. Right? He said, Hallelujah, that's right. Good for you, brother. All right, please are resurrected. All right, so, LeBron James went back to Cleveland. What happened? The first time he was in Cleveland, he failed to bring them a championship. Well, which is the time, I mean, which is Miami, what's the championship? He's coming back. Now, because he failed to bring them a championship, was LeBron James a failure? Look at great people fail all the time. Right? Look at Steve Jobs. You know what happened to Steve Jobs? Apple Computer? He found it out of Computer, was running it, and then they fired it. From the company he started. And then it went on the ground, it was on the street, and then they brought him back, and we have what we know today. Right? Barack Obama. Barack Obama got slaughtered in his first election. But now he got lost. Right? You gotta understand, great people lose at some point along the way. So don't fear failure. A lot of people talk about fear of failure. Right? The notion is you learn from it. So, if you, if you take the first exam, I got a 75. I'm going to learn what I did differently. Next exam, 85. Next exam, 95. That's the learning piece. Now, failure often occurs at the edge of our ability. What does that look like? What does that look like? Say, uh, I know you all work out for this. Say you're doing some push ups, right? So you're doing some push ups, he's doing some push ups. Say you do 20 push ups, you say, I thought I could do 20. He's doing 20, that's all he feels he can do, but he starts to push and slide on 21. So he fails to do the 21st. He does 21 and a half. He fails. The next time he does the same thing, he pushes that extra, pushes that extra, eventually he's going to do a few more than you. He's failing as he goes along, but his muscles are growing stronger because he's pushing himself to get the limit. The edge of your ability, look at the story of Nia Hill. He played soccer. He used to play up. He played with male soccer players. Nia Hill was a great soccer player, right? She said she played with females better than her, then she played with boys better than her. And one day she's able to hang with them. And then one day she's able to dominate them. But she was failing in the process until she became great. So read the biography of great people and you'll see failure in the mix. Low aim is sin. What is low aim? Low aim is a minimalist approach. What's the minimum I can do to achieve a particular goal? You know that many adults work hard enough to have to get fired? They do the minimum they can do. I don't pay enough to do that. That's not my job description. I'm not doing that. This is the, I'm down by that the bar. So if I need to, I did it exactly what you said. I'm done. Just not to get fun. We'll do the minimum amount, right? So that's accepting C's instead of A's in your approach. You accept underperformance when you know you have stronger ability. Seeding rather than studying. See, that's low A, right? In college, like I said before, they don't be supposed to. They don't be supposed to be enough. That's low A. When you see, because basically you're saying, I'm not willing to put in the time and effort to master this, or I just think I'm not smart. So I need to see. Not 
you're involving a challenge in court, some of you all are avoiding all the honest courts, the AG courts, because it might be too complex. That's where the development happens. It's the limit of your ability to need to put this up. What is the reward without the effort? That's what it is. What is the reward without the effort? Didn't you talk earlier about cleaning up the streets? He said, some folks want to come and eat without doing the work. That's the same thing. You want the benefit without the work. Well, that's the like that. Presenting yourself and then some other way back to the That's the same thing. Right? So how do you protect yourself? That's low end. Sagging hands, showing skin, unkept hair, all that stuff. And then having an at least mentality. Right? Then people say, well, you know, at least I'm not dead. At least I've got a baby mama. Uh, at least I'm not selling drugs. At least I'm not suspended. At least I'm not expelled. What credit for stuff you're supposed to do? You're not supposed to do those things. It's not an at least sort of thing. Right? And that's perfect. We gotta be the same way. We all let them fly. You know, they're brave and decent. At least they're not out there. They're being afraid to do that. So you let them just have their way. Because it's that least mentality. That least mentality is not what catapults us to the next level. It, remain, it maintains the status quo. It will facilitate mediocrity and entertainment and settling for less. We need to put them, regardless of their circumstance, to the next level. So the ancestors did not have low aim. It's quite the opposite, actually. They aimed extremely high. What does that look like? It was your ancestors that built the pyramids and the space and the obelisks and had the first education system. Your ancestors mapped the stars literally and then designed in Egypt the pyramids and stuff to line up with the stars thousands of years ago. Your ancestors who arrived in North Central and South America hundreds of years before Columbus. And let's pick all the kids back into Central America and Mexico where you can see them right now. There is African presence in North Central and South America that predates Columbus. Right now, if there's a natural curve, this is what you do. I might go to the weather weather camp or weather dot com and map where a hurricane is coming. Look at their origination. There's a natural current off the west coast of Africa that you would set a ship down and naturally flows into the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean and Florida. That's that. Some of y'all are not from here first. No. Columbus, people from North Central South America, and European. Black folks have been here before then. You need to know where you came. This is not to dismiss their contribution, but you need to know who you are and what you've done. Okay? So, in terms of answer, we epitomize uh, representing manifestly American dreams by the people. They call them three fifths of the man. They saw it as less than human, they exploited, raped, and tortured us by the grace of God, as we can also say, through the rock. Right? We became doctors like Charles Drew, Charles Drew, in spite of the graffiti experiment that they injected us with syphilis intentionally just to see how it would play out. Right? We became, do- we became lawyers and Supreme Court justices like Thurgood Marshall in spite of a criminal injustice system that made it illegal for us to read, vote, or get married. Now, in a land of founding documents, we hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. Please, do not part of the Bill of Rights by the Constitution of the Great of Independence. That was enough for black people. Understand, you weren't meant to be here. You weren't meant to excel. You get BAs and PhDs and MDs and JDs. But we did it anyway, in spite of those things. Right? And it's that kingdom university curriculum that's allowing us to do this. So we became engineers like Brother Elijah McCoy. I love this. Born free in 1844 in Canada. Moved to Ypsilanti, Michigan. Son of slaves who escaped from Kentucky went up to this Elijah McCoy through the Underground Railroad. Studied in Edinburgh, Scott, Scotland, where he was certified as a mechanical engineer. And he invented the automatic lubricant for oiling the steam engines of planes and ships. He was often imitated but never duplicated to the point where when people bought that piece, they would say, this is the real McCoy. That's where that comes from. Black man did that. But not even low. Black man in the 1850s, 60s, did it. Not even low. So we start with uh, let me put it to you this way. You know these these songs, right? You know Greg, you know, you know Greg. Uh, we started from the bottom. Right. You got to stay at the bottom. Right? Now, I don't want to say you can take because the record, that's all I'm not saying. But it's not. Make a certain point. All right? Uh, fair enough. Uh, so now let's look at the real McCoy through the, the pristine, pure, the perfect lens of Christianity and do a spiritual roll call. When it comes to praying, are you the real Christian McCoy? You go into your father and talk to God, or are you like sounding brass certificates? You just want to be saved. When it comes to your giving, are you the real Christian McCoy? Such that you get blessed with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, pouring into your bosom, for with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. 
or you drop the same $5 you've been giving for the last 20 years and keep it. And then complain about not being able to. That's tough shit. When it comes to the way you speak, you praise God in one breath and curse people in the next. Please remember this quote about fresh water and salt water not coming from the same place. When it comes to the gift of the Spirit, do you have love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control? Or are you just a soft and common kind of a Christian? You resemble a few Christians, but it's not quite the same. These are the tough steps you need to think about. The third thing your neighbor say, neighbor, oh neighbor. I am the real Christian McCoy. Now, there's another real McCoy follower of God. His name is David. Special David, we talked about him earlier. One of the professors at Kingdom University. You know his story, David and Goliath. Well, so David was a, a, a young, young man, man of God. Well, going along. All right, I'm about to wrap up. But, uh, uh, young man, I want to bring my daughter out. She didn't want to demonstrate something. So, David was a child. Come here, David. This is my baby girl, Zion Kennedy Mark. Just out of here, David. This is what I was I mean, the was nine feet tall, nine feet nine, and uh, some of us say, David was short, he was about five, six, so it was about like this difference, right? See, David, but David, but she had a swing set. If she wants to kill me for the lie that's coming after her, does she have to aim low? Does she have to line itself or aim high? This is the Goliath that's coming after her, she has to aim where? The kiss of the Goliath that's coming after her, she has to aim where? Y'all not getting it? The kill of the Goliath that's coming after her, she has to aim where? You can hit it below when the Goliath is coming after you. Even at the high of the tent level, you aim high, that's why you're not a higher purpose. Kingdom, you're supposed to be talking. So what we know is, and I want to grab this mic for her, can you make sure this mic is on too? Uh, you can chill in the bottom. Hold on to that. All right, so, you got the lion's problems in your life, right? Giant lion problems. Right? You got uh, homelessness, unemployment, depression. You know, the world's are broken up. All these things happen to you. Goliath is coming at you. Now, what you got to realize about the Goliath story is that uh, they were supposed to work with God before he swung the world. Right? So sometimes you just need to bring the word of God and so the lot of problems to kill him and knock him down. Like this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in his pastures. He may leave a side to still water, he restores my soul. He leaves me in the past to brush his dishes and then he says, There you go, walk through the valley of the shadow death. I pray no need for thou art with me. Thou art right in thy chest and cover me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my hair with oil, my covering is over. Surely you and the mercy shall follow me all days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The lion's problem. And they did break down regardless of the disaster. All right, so we have a lot of things to explain in that Oh, man, let me go, let me go, let me go. Okay, here we go. Half the class is having taken. I'm, I'm bringing it up next door. Half the class is having taken all the time. It's not the first two weeks. What does that look like? At a physical college, you can get to work with us. Right, the people on your GPA will get to call out. Cool cool now is about 3.81 to 4.0 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 Magical level is 3.5, 1 to 3.8. Cool level is 3.3 to 3.5. You got cool level is 1 to 3.5. Cool level is 1 to 3.5. And for some of y'all, it's just going to be fancy level. Because you're going to be glad that you got it. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing going. Let's see what happens. 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 Uh huh. The people of God uh, uh, over your lifetime, rather than the GPA, God will never have to go for it. But anyway, God will have the brethren to wait for that. Now, who now is good? 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 But what distinction will you have when you have a God for Jesus? 
So when God calls you home, right, it's time for your graduation day. Right? You're standing at the end of the street. Your name is Paul. You walk in the place from the physical space into eternity. What level of distinction will you have? Will you have honor? Will you have just the cum laude, the next cum laude, or the summa cum laude? But at every graduation, it's all said that it's usually a special uh, look stone of one particular individual. He's the one, or he's the one that has the highest GPA. We call him the the battle is part. How many of you can get the case for being a valedictorian of your graduating kingdom university class? How are you living your life so that God can give you a gold when you talk to the person? Have you seen my favorite show? And it's glad that the gold was valedictorian. So, I believe it. So, we have to say, where do you stand? Will you graduate with others? And this is for everybody to see it. So, by the grace of God, we come to this point. We talk to what we've gotten through. We want you to be able to stand up as believers and testify that God has gotten you to this school university and the kingdom university. So that you can aim high, receive higher learning, and graduate with the highest honor. So, God bless you. So, the book of the church, we just we, we like to put the this stuff, but also what we implore you all to really encourage our young people to continue to do. We can really encourage them. Even if you don't know them, what the type of one that is doing work of encouragement, please get up on what's going on in our case law school and all the time. We need to help them and know that they have support. And if they choose to do the right thing, that we are there to support them. Even if they're not the child, it's a privilege for the situation. What do you want to say, Nick? How about if we stand up? We stand up. 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 